So in this part, we're going to talk about introduction, road terminology, earthworks, geometric design, pavement construction, rigid uh, concrete pavements, road drainage, and then services. So transportation engineering involves planning, design, management of transportation systems that provide for the safe and efficient movement of people and goods. The common modes of transport is uh, pedestrian travel, walking, road transport, so trucks and cars, rail transport, which are trains, air transport, which, which are planes and helicopters, and then water transport, which are ships and boats. So road const construction involves investigation, route location, road design, setting out work boundaries, construction, and then opening of the road. So first, the investigation, site investigation. Site investigation study entails a desktop study, which for road construction, a point B or point A and B is already fixed. And you look at the wider area between point A and B and establish possible routes that you could follow. Then a preliminary investigation involves investigation of possible alignments that can be used. And then a detailed investigation is done uh, on that center line that you do pick at the end of the day. Route location. As soon as a route is located, final levels and center lines are fixed to form the base of the next stage, which is design. So road design. The factors that you need to take into account for road design are cross sections, design speed, sight distance, stopping and braking distance, vertical alignment, horizontal alignment, and then pavement thickness. So first thing, you set out your road. This process involves setting out of levels on the site to prepare for construction. So when you do the construction, a, con a contractor is appointed, the site office is established, and construction plant is brought to the site. After everything is done, then the road is opened. So road markings and road furniture are finalized. So that's after all of the construction is done. And please do read up on this in chapter three of your handbook, because there's a lot more detail of this whole chapter. This whole chapter is something that you need to double check in your book as well. Okay, so the road terminology that's important to know Arterial highways, freeways, expressways, dual carriage roads, service roads, road beds, then your median. Median, some people get confused. It's basically that part between two roads where people can walk or trees are planted, and then road services. Who is managing our roads? We have Sanral, then we have the provincial government or metropolitan councils. Over here we have MMM, which is the Mangahung Metro Municipality. Then you have your local municipality, which is for smaller towns and so on. But to me, my question, I'm asking you to search up a little bit more. Who controls what road? So if you have an N1 or you have a R23, you have just Nelson Mandela Road, all those, which group controls what road? Road classes. Roads are classified according to function and traffic characteristics. So the classes we get are national roads, which are your N1, N2, N3, and they have limited access, meaning cars can't just drive on there anywhere they want to. They have to follow, they have to come with a slipway, and you'll see they are distances apart from each other. Then you get your arterials. They are, have, are high capacity roads that supplement movement around the city. You get district distributors that carry high volumes of traffic and are the links between higher and lower classes of road. You get local distributors which links your neighborhoods. So you have one neighborhood on the one side of the local distributor, the other one on the other side. And then you get your access roads which go into those residential areas. Okay, then we talk about earthworks. Earthworks include removing topsoil formation levels, subgrade embankments, and cutting. A cut is a removal of surplus material. A fill is using that excess or borrowed material to raise the level of the formation level. Right, important 
two terms that you need to know there. Read up the definitions of these, these uh, terms in page 83. So your haul, overhaul and free haul, waste and spoil, you know what that is, borrow, station meter, shrinkage and bulking, datum and then chainage. You're supposed to know that from surveying or geomatics. So here we get into something that's important, the mass haul diagram. The mass haul diagram is a graphical representation of soil volumes. Using the mass haul diagram, one can work out the distance, the distance over which a cut and fill will balance. So if for the first 50 meters, you get a cut of 50 cubic meters, and the next 50 meters after that, you can use that direct cut to fill another 50 cubic meters, you can work that out. Then the quantities of material to be moved and direction of movement, areas where earth have to be borrowed or wasted, and the best method to obtain most economic use of a construction plant so that you don't remove all of the soil and then you have to bring in an, a lot of new soil again afterwards. Okay, why is this important? The mass hole diagram is going to be your assignment. Activity 3.4 will help you a lot in that. It is based on the mass hole diagram and this video link that I have here will help you a lot as well. Geometric design. Geometric design is concerned with the positioning of physical elements of the roadway according to the standards and constraints. constraints. An engineer or technologist or even a technician needs to prepare the following for a geometric design. The contours and the grid systems, the design and drawing of the horizontal alignments, then the design and drawing of the vertical alignments, a typical cross section, also a cross section for calculation of the earthwork quantities, that's now your mass wall diagram, and then the design and the drawing of the intersection. Geometric design, contours. Contours needed, are needed for different types of civil engineering work. Contours plan, contour plans uses extensive earthwork excavations. Uh, they are used in choosing the route and they are used in estimating and calculating earthwork quantities. So that's just a description or a look at how contours do look. Then we get to horizontal alignment. So you get your contours, now you start working out the horizontal curves of your road. A, a horizontal alignment is a series of straight and circular curves connected by transition curves. Okay, Transition curves are curves of constantly changing radius, providing smooth movement from a straight to a circular curve. So just to explain it, if you have a straight line and all of a sudden there's a turn, you can't just have that. Before, to connect your straight line and your curve, which has a constant radius, you have a transition curve, which kind of smooths out between the straight line and the curve. That's why its radius constant, constantly changes. Okay, so in this example here, you have a straight line over there, you have a curve, so a transition curve, will be over there. Then, horizontal alignment, when, when we go on with it, a super elevation is also formed. Now, a super elevation, easy way to remember that, that is just this section that's lifted up a bit. If you drive from the N1 and you go into the slipway to go back into town, you will always notice these super elevations around the curves as well where you can still drive fast you'll notice them because they kind of leave the car in line of the road still. Then we get to vertical alignment. So vertical alignment is felt through up and down movements when driving on the road. Vertical curves are inserted between two straight uh, straights of the road. Curves are concave shaped downwards which are sags and at the foot of a valley or a convex shape upwards, which is a crest, at the summit. So at the top of a hill, it's a crest. At the bottom of the hill, it is a sag. Right. Going further with the vertical alignment, crest curves are controlled by sight distance. So think of it, if you have a hill, you have a hill that does that, and your car drives over. 
the only thing that controls your alignment there is how far your car can see. All right. So then you have a sag curve, which would be that shape. Sorry if I don't have a picture now, it would be that shape. So how that is aligned is your car drives there, it is how far your lights can actually shine. So you can still see for night. So the length of the curve is obtained from uh, this formula, L equals K times A. Your length of your curve is your comfort factor times your algebraic difference. That's examples of a couple of vertical alignments for me not important at the moment but there is an example that you can look through but it is more for transportation engineers pavement construction pavement refers to layers which form the road layer so you get subgrades sub base base course and your surfacing the type of pavements are your flexible pavement which is a road with low tensile strength and consists of a series of layers of material then you get your rigid pavements, which consist of concrete slab resting on layers of material. So that flexible pavement would be your roads that we call tar roads, which aren't tar roads, it's bitumen roads or asphalt roads actually. So that's a flexible pavement, an asphalt road. Then your rigid pavement is your concrete roads, which you see more uh, in the metropolitan areas, the big metropolitan areas, or in Durban, there's a lot of concrete pavements as well. Okay, so that's your road layers. Please know that. Know how to draw a layer like that. You don't need to draw 3D though, but just know and understand that. You get your subgrade at the bottom, which is your original soil basically, just after you remove the spoil. Then you get your sub base, which is gravel you brought in. Then you get your road base layer, which is a finer gravel that you brought in again. Then you get an asphalt base course, a binder course, and then a surface course. So a subgrade, this is the layer that forms the formation level of the road. Okay, and as you can see, this is that's your roadway over here. That's literally your subgrade. That's at the bottom. That's the original soil. Just after removing this, this spoil, the stuff with the vegetation in, you get that. Right. Then you get your sub base. That's the material you bring in and that's placed on the formation layer. Then you get your base course. There are three main categories for base courses. You get natural material, asphalt, and then concrete bases. Natural base courses are gravel base courses or crusher run base courses. We get asphalt based courses, uh, like I said, concrete based courses, and then you get two others, which is a prime coat and a tack coat. So then you get your surfacing. Like I said, there's two types of sur surfacing I mentioned now, now, but you also get a hot mix asphalt, like I said. The short for that is HMA. Then you get a chip and spray method, and then you get a slurry seal. Then the other one you get, which we'll go into a little bit more depth, is a rigid concrete pavement. It is laid over a strong layer of base course or sub base. The joints in a slab are included to do this. So these are just this joints that I'm talking about. You'll always see that in concrete roads. Those joints are included to limit the size of the slab. You don't want it too big because then external factors just are too, just influence it too much to limit the stress in the slab and to make provision for slab movement. Rigid concrete pavements, the type of joints you get is expansion, expansion joints, contraction joints, longitudinal joints, construction joints, and then warping joints. Then you get your road drainage. It involves redirecting water to collect points and convey water to the outfalls. So the direction water will be directed to the edges of the road. This is done by forming cross falls over the roads and at the end of the day this is done to prevent vehicles from skidding off of the road. So it's a safety measure. Last thing then is services. You get a couple of services. You get sewerage pipes, storm water pipes. I think you know the difference between those two otherwise read up a little bit. Electrical supply cables, water mains, and then telephone cables. 